Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Tehillim Treasures, where every week in Mitzvah Shem, we're going to learn two kapitlach of Tehillim, get an idea of what's going on, what was David HaMelech talking about, and how we can relate to it. We are sponsored by two exceptional organizations every week. The first is Chazak. Chazak is an organization that has provided incredible Torah content, especially these last few years when we needed it to be able to connect to the Rabbeinu Shalom, to better appreciate the Torah, to better appreciate our privilege to be the Am Hanivcha, the chosen nation. Additionally, Chazak's main work is to help children that are in public schools go to yeshivas and you can contact them if you know of a child that is in need of a yeshiva at PSTY public school to yeshiva at chazak with a q.org our second sponsor is chickensforshabbos.com where every single week there are those families families of melamdim rebeim's children rebeim's wives who do not have enough to put food on the table. For agunis, for women who are nebuch alone. For grushes, for women who are divorced and they don't have where to turn. And they need food and they need clothing. They need people to help them with utilities and so much more. Please be generous in your donation to chickensforshabbos.com. This week's chapter is the 17th and 18th chapters of Tehillim, and the 17th chapter specifically is very, very special and dear to me, and you'll understand why. Many years ago, I wrote a column for the Ated Nemon, and that's where I wrote about Tehillim, and those different essays were transferred into a book. I mean, of course, I added a lot to it, but that's where it originally appeared. And when I wrote on the 17th chapter of Tehillim, I received a letter. And I'm going to tell you about the letter in a moment, but first I want to tell you about the capital because that will help the letter be more appreciated. The capital, the 17th chapter of Tehillim Dabra Melech asks Hashem to save him from his enemies. Shima Hashem Tzedek, Hakshiva Rinasi, listen to my song, Hazina Tfilasi. But Dabra Melech, interestingly, does not jump in just to Tfila, rather he turns to Tshuva. He's afraid that perhaps he needs to do Tshuva. And if you need to do Tshuva, then your Tfila will be compromised. And so Dabra Melech does Tshuva first, and then he asks the Rabbi Nishalem to help him be saved from his enemies. He's being chased by Shaul HaMelech. Shaul is hounding him. He's looking to kill him. And David HaMelech needs a salvation. And David HaMelech cries out to the Rabbi Nishalem. And of course, David HaMelech was answered. And David HaMelech's tefillahs were answered by Hashem. And David HaMelech ultimately becomes the king. And his enemy Shaul, unfortunately, meets a very, very bitter end. However, the 17th chapter, Hashgacha would have it, is something that gives us much insight into what this capital is all about. The number 17 itself. The number 17 is the gematria of Toiv. But it's interesting, you would think Toiv, 17, it doesn't ring of a happy number. We're coming up soon to the Day of Shiva Asr B'Tam was one of the saddest days in the Jewish calendar year when five terrible tragedies happened. And because of that, Toiv would seem to be a sad number. In fact, the first time the letter Toiv, which means good, appears in the Torah, is by the word Toiv. And Toiv is the first time a letter Tess appears. And Reb Tzaddik says that the first time a letter appears in the Torah teaches us about that letter. So Tess which first appears as Toiv, means it's good. How could 17, how could Jeval Sabetamus, how could all those miserable events be good? And the answer, says Reb Tzaddik, is another test. The test is Tisha B'Av, the ninth day of Av. And if you look at the letter test, you will find that it's almost as if there's an arrow pointing in to teach us to look inward. Because sometimes what appears to be bad on the outside is really for our best. We know everything that Hashem does to us is for our best. Hashem never ever does anything to hurt us. Sometimes we need time to recognize that it's for the best. So listen to the letter that I received from a woman after I published this 17th essay on Tehillim on the 17th chapter of Tehillim. 
and she writes to Rabbi Spiro, together with a partner, I publish a newsletter approximately four times a year for families that are grieving. In this week's Yatad, your column actually roared to me as I read the title, It's All Good. The issue we are working now, on now, for Chodesh Tishrei, is our 17th issue. To me, 17 has always been a special number. My son was nifter in his 17th year, during which he said, Perek Yud Zion for half a year. It's customary that when people turn a certain number, a child turns 16, it's customary for people to recite the 17th chapter the entire year. So this child who was not well was reciting the 17th capital the entire year of his 17th year of his life. He was nifter halfway through. He was so excited to begin reciting it when he turned 16, hoping that saying it would be a simon toiv for him during his illness. I can say today, and listen to the words of a Yiddish mama and the emuna, the belief that she has. I can say today, five years later, that although his absence is still so painful, I can see the good within. We, my partner and I, who also lost her child, began this publication within the year that our children were nifter, our children were nifter, 10 hours apart. I had been in the middle of writing up my editorial for this issue before Shabbos, but when I read your column, I felt like you were talking directly to me. We hope that no one is suffering, but unfortunately people do suffer. People have illness, and people have parnasa issues, and they have tsar gidul banim, and they look for shidduchim, and there's all types of tsaris. Know that ultimately, it is good. Hashem is good, and you will be okay as well. We now move on to the 18th chapter of Tehillim. And the 18th chapter is Lam Natseach Le'eved Hashem Le'David. In Eved Hashem. David HaMelech, when you think of a slave, an Eved Hashem, a servant of Hashem, you don't think of a king. Yet David HaMelech, the greatest appellation, the greatest honor that he is given, the greatest title that David HaMelech has given is not only Melech Yisrael Chai Vikayim, that he's a king, but at the same time he is an Eved, he is a servant. And who else had that title? None other than Moshe Rabbeinu. Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe in many ways was considered a Melech, he had a din of a Melech. He was a king. David HaMelech was the leader of the Jewish people. And yet, he is called an Eved Hashem as well. And there's so much discussion in the Mepharshim as to when David HaMelech wrote the Shira. Rashi says that he wrote it at the end of his life, reflecting back on all of the difficulties, all of the Tsaris, and then all of the Yeshuas. You know, sometimes when we're in the middle of the Tsara, it's impossible to imagine how we're ever going to get out of the Tsara. Someone once very wisely told me, and I try to remind myself about this when I'm going through a personal issue. Someone told me, unless something is going to affect your life in 10 years from now, it's not worth worrying or getting upset over. What a great idea that is. Imagine you have a child and the child is struggling and you, you don't know what you're going to do when your stomach is turning. If you think it's just a passing phase, don't worry, he'll be okay. I know it's hard to realize that at the time. I know it's hard to sleep at night when your child's going through something or when you're going through something. But have bitachin. Some people say that David HaMelech was able to find the goodness in everything and able to express shira in every moment. I recently saw a chassam soifer. The chassam soifer says, Ka chassalavim mitoich b'nei Yisrael. Zot the chassam soifer. And again, so many of these ideas I'd like to explain on a whiteboard, which I have behind me, but it would be pretty awkward if I actually wrote it out. So you have the word Yisrael. Ka chassalavim mitoich b'nei Yisrael. 
from inside of the Bnei Yisrael. What is the toich? What is the centerpiece of Klal Yisrael? You have on the, one, on the one hand, on the one side, you have the Yud and the Shin, which spells Yesh. On the other side of Yisrael, you have the Aleph and Lamed, which spells Kel, which means Yesh, Kel, there is a God. How? Through the Reish. How do you know there's always your Rabbi Nishalem says the Chassam Seifer? How do you prove to the world? How do you prove to yourself that there is a God? Look at the Reish. The Reish, if you spell it out as Reish Yud Shin, which spells the word when you move around the letters, Sheer, a song. You want to prove that there's a Rabbi Nishalem on this world? then sing his praises no matter what. It's a recurring theme through Tehillim. It's David's, really it's his mantra, it's what Sefer Tehillim is all about. Prove it to yourself and sing through the Tsaris, and you will realize that everything, all the good, all the bad, and like we spoke about in the last capital of Tehillim, all of the Tsaris, and hopefully all of the Yeshuas, you see it, that is the Shira we sing to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. It's hard to sing out to Hashem. It's hard to see that when a Yid is lost, that really it's for his best. But there's a great story with Ramatul Pagamansky. Ramatul Pagamansky was traveling. He was supposed to get off at a certain stop. Now Ramatul was considered a maverick, brilliant Talmud Chacham. He wasn't a Rosh Hashiva at least in tells he wasn't, but he used to come to the base Medrash a lot, and he was a legend, Rav Gifta would talk about him, Ramatul Pagamansky, that the Rosh Hashivas loved him, and they fawned over him, Talmidim, everybody was in awe of Ramatul, it was brilliant, in fact, when Rav Gifter was maspid, Rav Elia Lepian, when he eulogized Rav Elia Lepian, he spoke about Rav Elia, and he said, Rav Elia was the one that discovered Ramatul Pagamansky, he was about Shuva. he wasn't even from as a child, and Ramatul Bagamansky became this brilliant, brilliant, brilliant Talmud Chacham. So Ramatul Bagamansky is on the train and he's together with somebody else and, and they missed their stop or they couldn't get off for whatever reason it is. And the fellow was all worried. He said, what are we going to do? And Ramatul told him, Yid is never lost. There's always a reason for why we happen to be in a certain place and it seemed hopeless. How are they going to ever get to their destination? They got off at the next stop and Yid stops them. He says, are you a mile? Turns out the other fellow was a mile. Ramatul was the sandik from the bris. There was a specific reason he went through that period. Again, it wasn't a terrible tzara. But he knew a yid is never lost. That's the purpose of a yid. A yid has to be able to sing the shira. And if you want to know what an eved is, what a servant is, he's willing to do every task that his master asks of him. Yes, David is Melech Yisrael Chai Bekayim, but David is also an Eved, an Eved of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. If every individual, as an Eved Hashem, understands that our tafkid is to serve Hashem no matter what, then each person becomes a Melech. We're all Melechim, we're all kings. How? By doing our Avdus, by doing what we have to do, by singing the praises of HaKadosh Baruch Hu, no matter what our situation, to tell the world, Yesh Kel, there is always a God, and our song proves that. Until next time, be well.